Hi, it's Jim, and we're talking more about Security Plus exam and what we can do to get through this thing. Talking about types of attacks, and specifically this morning, we're going to jump in and talk about an attack that's called the ARP cache poisoning. So let's jump into this thing. So you can see this is part of domain one and subdomain one dot two types of attacks. This is the ARP cache poisoning attack. Uh, in this attack, we will attack the address resolution protocol cache or the ARP table that lives within uh, the computers and switches uh, that may be on your network. So it's an attack that's used by an attacker to intercept communications on a network and obtain any files sent to and from the victim flooding or overwriting that ARP table or address resolution protocol table to send information to the attacker instead of the host or the victim. So when we look at this thing, what ARP should look like is if Alice is trying to talk to the computer that's at the address 192.168.1.10, uh, her computer will broadcast a request to the network and ask, who has this IP address? May hit the local computer and be resolved at the local computer, or it may go off to the first switch it encounters to check for that address. So it will ask the switch to check its ARP table to say who has 192.168.1.10. And if that switch doesn't know, it'll broadcast that forward looking for an answer to that question. So when it finally gets to the computer that has that IP address, that computer will respond with its MAC address or the network address of the network card. When that's received by both the switch and the computer, the ARP table will be updated and it will include that new information. So now in addition to Alice's computer being logged into that ARP table, Bob's computer is also logged. So now this ARP table knows that the address 192.168.1.10 is associated with the MAC address listed that ends in 23.40 in hexadecimal. So next time Alice goes to send information to Bob on that .10 computer, it will not need to be resolved. It'll go automatically there. But what attackers can do, we see the traffic going to where it's supposed to be going. So the traffic goes from Alice's computer through the switch to Bob's computer because it's routed correctly. What an attacker can do is that attacker can get on the network and continually broadcast that they are actually uh, 192.168.1.10 instead of Bob. So Hank can get on the network and just continually broadcast to the switch that they are actually that IP address. And because the switch doesn't have a lot of security built in, the ARP table will be overwritten by the information that Bob's sending. So now the switch believes that 192.168.1.10 is actually Hank's computer at the MAC address that ends with 44 dash ff in hexadecimal. So now uh, the tables are updated and the information instead of flowing correctly to Bob's computer is now being sent to Hank's computer uh, and he's probably getting information that he shouldn't get. So the ARP poisoning attack changes information within the address resolution protocol table of computers and switches by overriding the correct information with malicious information. And if we remember back to how a switch works, we know that a switch restricts traffic only to those ports that the traffic should be going to. So this is a way for Hank, the hacker, to get information that they shouldn't have. And that's why the ARP poisoning attack is so dangerous. So as always, we look forward to you liking, subscribing, hitting the bell to be notified and commenting. Let us know what you think about these videos and how they're helping you get ready for the Security Plus or any other certification. And uh, we will see you next time. So be safe out there.